Hello everybody and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on how to use SymPy, an open source simulation package in Python. SymPy works in Python 2.7 and greater as well as uh, Python 3, 3.2 and greater. Um, and it's uh, one of the more popular open source packages for discrete event simulation available in Python. Uh, one of the great things about SymPy is that it's very easy to pick up the basics um, and while it's maybe not the fastest simulation package out there compared to an open source package in, in C or C++, it's still very fast. Um, one really good thing about SymPy is that it is in Python, so you can make use of all the open source packages available in Python uh, to create a fully featured simulation model. Um, for example, you could use packages like matplotlib to create graphical output, um, you can create user interfaces, um, you know, you have access to SciPy, NumPy, so there are a lot of tools at your fingertips with Python and uh, SymPy uh, is just another one of those great open source packages. So this series of videos will start uh, with the basics, um, so if you do know uh, the basics of SymPy, feel free to skip to the more advanced tutorials. Um, but uh, you know, I'm going to get into some, some pretty tricky stuff as well and some things that hopefully you don't know uh, when it comes to SymPy that will come in very useful when you're developing your discrete event models. Um, and these uh, tutorials are also intended for someone who at least knows the basics of programming in Python um, and uh, hopefully you'll pick up a little bit more along the way. So to actually install SymPy, it's quite easy. If you have uh, pip already installed, um, you just need to open up your command, uh, command prompt and run pip install SymPy. Um, now for me, I've already done that, um, so it lets me know that that requirement's already satisfied. But that should work for you if you have a properly configured installation of Python. Um, and uh, yeah, if you also have pip install. I'm going to have a link to these two steps uh, in the video description, plus a link to the SymPy documentation. Uh, and the SymPy documentation uh, is, is quite useful, although sometimes it's difficult to understand for a first time user. So uh, I'm thinking that some people are, are probably familiar with other simulation packages uh, that are out there, like Arena, AnyLogic. Uh, FlexSim, Simulate, and so on. Um, so I'm going to assume that you know the basics of discrete event simulation if you're here. Uh, and if you don't, and if you want to know more about simulation, I would refer you to uh, uh, the, the book by Averill Law, Simulation Modeling and Analysis. I'll link that in the description as well. Or just uh, check out the Wikipedia page for discrete event simulation and so you, that way you'll understand some of the terminology I'm using when I'm talking about um, the clock, entities, um, resources, and other simulation terminology. Okay, so I'm going to get into an example here. Um, so as we know, simulation entities uh, like customers or like products um, and uh, other active model components, like for example, a, a server or bank teller, um, steps in a manufacturing process, or other uh, traditional process steps in simulation. These are all modeled as uh, processes in SymPy. So whether you have an entity or process, they're all considered processes in SymPy. And that's a little bit different from um, software like Arena, for example. Okay, so processes are defined uh, using generators in SymPy, and generators are really the key idea behind uh, SymPy. So I'm going to show a quick example of how generators actually work uh, compared to how functions work in Python. Now, if you're already familiar with uh, how generators work, feel free to skip forward a couple of minutes in the video. Uh, if not, then I will show you in a quick example here. Okay, so this is a very basic generator function. And now I'm going to write a similar um, similar function that's uh, just a regular function, not a generator. And hopefully that will help to illustrate the difference between the two. So the big difference is um, a generator ha uses the yield statement, while a function uses a return statement. 
And I'm going to illustrate uh, exactly how that works uh, right now. So I'm just going to navigate to where this file is saved and then um, use these functions. So I'm going to import them. And similarly, I'll import the function. OK, so I'm going to define the generator function as our gen. And I'm going to give it the value of a value of 3 as the argument. I'm going to define our function as our fun with an argument of 3 as well. Now, um, of course, that doesn't really do anything. When you print um, the value of our fun, it's 0. And it's always going to be 0. Because this function is just going through to here to this for loop for j in range n, this j is going to be 0 the first time through, and it's returning 0. It's always going to return 0. Now, what makes a generator special is that it has a memory uh, between uses. So with our gen, we can show um, generators have this uh, next feature, which is uh, used in SymPy. And when we run our gen dot next, the first time through, it's going to say for j in range n, yield j. So it's going to do the exact same thing as the function did. But when you run that again, the next time, it's going to yield a 1. And then the generator is going to stop executing right here and wait for you to run the next command again. Next time through, it will run a, a 2. And now at this point, since we gave it the argument of 3 uh, in the range um, field here, uh, it should cycle back to 0. So you can see how um, the generator could be useful um, when you're designing a simulation package, and uh, SimPy makes full use of this capability. So, on to some more interesting stuff. So, um, what's interesting in SimPy is that uh, this yield statement is really one of the key uh, points. And it, that's because processes uh, defined as generators can actually communicate uh, or coordinate with one another uh, in the simulation framework by yielding and triggering uh, different events. And timeout events are actually the most important type of event. Uh, and what they allow you to do is to suspend a process for a certain amount of time on the simulation clock before resuming it. And I'm going to do a quick example here in SimPy that uh, should illustrate the basic ideas uh, of uh, how that would work. So first I'm going to import the SimPy package. And then I'm going to define a main uh, function. The first thing you have to do in any SimPy uh, model is you have to actually define the environment within which your simulation actually takes place. And that's a little different from other simulation packages. Um, but what it would allow you to do in theory is to have multiple uh, simulation environments um, occurring at the same time. And uh, I'm not going to get into anything like that today, or, or maybe in these tutorials at all. Um, but uh, th this does allow you to, uh, to do that. And really, what's key here is that all your processes and all your events uh, in your simulation model need to take place in this environment. Um, so it's important to tell uh, all your processes what environment they should be in. Okay. So the first, uh, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to define um, a process, which is going to be a simple traffic light. And the traffic light is going to need the argument uh, env, which is our environment, because we're, the traffic light is going to need to know uh, that it's in, within that, uh, that environment. So. Our traffic light is going to basically just change from green to yellow to red, and uh, 
and time out between each uh, light change and there's and that's just a you know a basic basic cycle so I'm going to print um, that the light turned green and I'm going to say when it, when that will be which will be uh, a method uh, or yeah so what you can do here uh, to find out at what time it is in the simulation model is actually just run this env dot now uh, and that will give you your simulation time now simulation time in SimPy is unitless so it's up to you to keep track of your units and we're gonna use seconds here so this will print um, at what time the light turns green and then we're gonna say that our light at this intersection um, stays green for 30 seconds and then unfortunately uh, for, for anybody driving that way it's gonna turn yellow so we'll just uh, change green to yellow here and the light's going to remain yellow um, for five seconds and um, so I'm using these these yield statements here so what's actually happening here. Um, actually, uh, I'm going to continue building this object and then I'm going to step through the logic. So similarly, our light can turn red. And it remains red for whoops. Uh, let's say 20 seconds. Okay. So um, and actually, let's actually make this so we can run this. Okay. Um, this is just a Python thing. If you if you're unfamiliar with Python. Okay. So. Um, what we have to do here in our main is we need to actually um, run this event and, or run this process and and uh, make it make it actually exist within the environment. So what we then do is we do env dot process. So now it's expecting you to tell it a process that's going to run in that environment, and we're going to give it one that we've just designed um, called traffic light. So the next thing we have to do is actually run the environment. So now we've set up our model. Um, we need to run our model. And we're just going to run our model for, uh, let's run it for two minutes, 120 seconds. And then when it's complete, we will just print simulation complete. OK. So what's actually happening here? Let me, let me run this. Um, Okay, take a look at our output here. So what's actually happening here um, is first our program's going to the main and it's defining our simulation environment. We're then placing a process in our environment which is our traffic light process. And what's happening here is this is immediately, um, when you're defining this, it's immediately running this function, or this generator, I should say. It's going to here, it's saying, well, true, and it's printing this right away uh, before we even hit run. It's printing this. Um, and at this time, the environment time is still at zero. And then it's encountering this yield statement. So at this yield statement, the generator pauses uh, and it's going to wait 30 units in the environment before it actually resumes. Okay, so at this stage, uh, it's waiting, and then it's going back to the main and saying we're going to run the environment for 120 seconds. And 
at this stage, after 30 seconds passes, it, well, really, uh, because it's a discrete event simulation model, it's immediately jumping to 30 seconds in the future because that's the next event on the event list is to complete this yield statement and then it's going to print this and that's where we're seeing the light turn yellow at t equal 30. It's then going to wait five seconds. Again, uh, the software is much more efficient than this. It doesn't actually wait five seconds. It just jumps immediately to the next event, which would be five seconds in the future. It prints that the light is now red at t equals 35. And because we put this all within a while loop, um, this simulation will run indefinitely or until a termination condition has been reached. And in this case, we're only running our model um, for 120 seconds. Now, this can change, and of course, the light's going to change a whole lot more. So that's a very basic uh, simulation model in SimPy. Um, next time, I'm going to talk about resources in SimPy and queuing and some different ways of doing that. Um, SimPy offers several different types of resources that can be very useful for the simulation model that you may be designing. So hopefully you'll tune in next time. Thanks for watching.